Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this consultation series. We're gonna give you all kinds of tips and tricks for effectively and properly lighting up your home. If you wanna get your free consultation, just shoot me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca. Send me a few pictures and we'll give you a video presentation of what lights are gonna work best with your property or go and visit us at lightingdoctor.ca or go check out all our videos on YouTube. So now that we've selected our lights, I often talk about you gotta go and, and just place all the lights roughly where you want them. Uh, you're gonna wanna come back at night, see how everything looks because you might wanna make some adjustments. Um, but usually I'll go around and just do that. Just dig a, a small hole, place the lights, get them set where I think I want them um, and leave lots of room because the other thing I always suggest is leave lots of extra wire at every single fixture so that if you do need to move them, you're not having to cut wires, um, you can just move the light around and you've got lots of wire to play with. And the other reason you want to dig that big hole is because then you can easily hide that wire and bury it nice and snug when you're all done. So it's really the first step is placing your lights, laying out the wire and then going to get everything wired up, which I'll show you how we do now. We've gone around, we've, we've laid out all our wire um, from each fixture. We've made sure to leave a lot of extra wire at every single fixture, so that way if we ever need to move it, um, it just gives us some play, and we got some extra wire to splice into and stuff. The biggest mistake most people make is they use those cheap clips, um, and they don't leave any slack whatsoever, and it just kind of bites into the wire. And then if you ever have to make a repair, you can't, and all of a sudden you got to cut your wire back and cut your wire back and then you've got two or three extra connections that you don't need it's just more chance for them to fail so, um, so yeah leave lots of extra wire to to wire your lights is actually really simple every every lights gonna have two wires coming off of it and your 12 2 wire obviously has the two wires so you have your wire coming in you want to split those and just take off you know maybe about an inch off the end of each one um, just with your wire cutters, and then you've got your line that's going out to the next fixture. I like using these, these are the BVS2 snap lock connectors that we talk about. Um, they're gel filled so they help keep the water out. They also clamp down on the wire so it keeps them from pulling apart over time, which is, um, that's, the number one, uh, that's the number one thing that happens when there's a bad break. The wires can just come out, a light stops working, and then you gotta dig it up, and again, if it's not, um, if you didn't leave enough wire, then it becomes a major pain in the butt. So I like using these, but even with those, I still like wrapping um, a little bit of electrical tape around the end, just to give it that extra little bit so we know that they're not gonna come apart. But uh, really simple, again, we've got our wire coming in, our wire going out, and then we've got two wires from our fixture. We're gonna take one of those, and we're gonna just stick them in the ports at the bottom of our snap lock connectors. There's three holes, there's three wires. It's pretty simple. Put them in. Snap it tight. And then, like I said, I like to just put a little extra electrical tape. You probably don't need to, um, but I always rather be safe than sorry. So I'll just put a little bit uh, along the base. Just to keep that nice and tight. You don't have to go around the whole thing because again, these are waterproof. And you're going to do the same thing with your second set of wires. You have your wire coming in, your wire going out, and then your other fixture wires. So wire those up, and once you've got all your lights wired, go fire on your transformer. Make sure everything's looking, or everything's working, and then come back at night. See how everything looks before you go and start burying all the wire. Uh, and with all the extra wire you have, basically just roll it up. And because I dug a nice big hole, there's lots of room to stuff that down there and bury it up. And we're all set. Yes, yeah, so when it comes time to bury in your wire, just you know, creating a simple trench again, you don't have to go super deep because it's just low voltage wire, uh, but just making your life a little easier by creating a trench. If you can get a tool, something like this, it uh, works really, help, really well to help push that wire down nice and deep into the ground. <laughs> and then if you need to, just as an extra uh, measure, just some landscape staples is not a bad idea to throw on the wire in a couple different places just to make sure it doesn't come up because if you go and put mulch up down on this uh, at a later date and you're raking that in sometimes you can snag the wire a simple landscape staple will help keep that wire down so that you're not pulling up those wires um, the advantage is if you're using good connectors you're, you don't have to worry about those pulling apart anyway but if you want to help keep that wire buried uh, landscape staples is a really easy way to do that this is a question i get all the time 
and guys will hook up all their lights and they get through the lot and everything's working and they hook up their last light and all of a sudden it's not working uh, and it's typically because that last fixture on the line seems to tend tends to give people some confusion I can't even say it so uh, so we're getting poured on here but I'm going to show you uh, the last fixture on the line here and how we're going to go and wire that and if you want a better uh, definition and diagram go to YouTube search lighting doctor wiring diagram and I give you a really really thorough example of this but so I've got my last fixture right here and I've got my my two wires that come off of that fixture right and then I've got my 12 2 wire that is coming to the last fixture so I don't have another wire going to another one this is it this is the end. So what most people do is they just end up using one connector and putting all the wires in and then it shorts everything. So, but that's, that's not how you do it. Even on this last fixture, you still need two of your connectors. So what you're going to do again, you're going to have your 12, two wire and you're going to split that and you're going to take one of those wires and you're going to throw it in the big port on your BBS two connectors. And then you're going to take one wire, from your actual fixture and you're gonna put it in one of the small ports on that same connector. So you're gonna have, on the last fixture, you're gonna have one extra hole for wire. You don't need to use that, you've only got two wires coming in. And then you need to do that one more time because you still have another wire to your, from your fixture and you still have another wire, another 12-2 wire coming in. So same thing. You're gonna throw that 12-2 wire in the big port and you are gonna throw that small wire in the smaller port from your fixture and then still at that last light you still have the two connections the only difference with this and one in line is one in line that extra hole is going to have the 12 2 wire that goes out to your next light on both of these right because this is our last fixture you have that hole empty so um, I like using these BVS2 snap lock connectors I also like using these um, these DBRY connectors, which I talked a lot about, which same idea, except the only difference is the wires just screw into this morette and this morette slides into this waterproofing tube. So it doesn't matter what you use. The big two things to keep in mind is one, some type of waterproofing. It's gotta be gel filled of some sort. Those connectors that you buy at Home Depot and places like that, that pierce the wire, um, stay away from those. If they have the those connectors built right onto the fixture and you still want to use that fixture, cut them off and use a proper one that's uh, got some kind of sealant in it to make that a waterproof connection or I promise you, you'll be digging up that connection. And the other thing is something that has a mechanical connection. So what that means is something that will hold the wires from being pulled apart. These ones I like because they snap tight and once the wires are in there, they don't come out. Same with these. Once you got the wires in there and these big gel filled tubes and you snap this shut, you're not pulling the wires out of that. So some people will just use those gel filled morettes, which is fine, they have that waterproofing, but then you gotta wrap them with tape or zip tie the wires together, do something so you can't pull those wires together. Or again, I promise you, you're gonna be digging up down the road. So there's all kinds of other wire connectors that are out there, but they need those two components, waterproofing and that mechanical connection to keep those wires from coming apart. So hope that helps and we'll move on to the next step uh, after this. The last thing I'm going to explain on this uh, property is a transformer and how to size that properly. Um, I'm obviously I'm not mounting this one right here, but anytime you're going to mount this, you want to just mount it close to um, a GFCI receptacle somewhere that you can plug it in. And all that does is it converts that 110 volt power that comes out of the house down to 12 or 15 volt that is going to go to your system. Uh, and that's what makes it low voltage and that's what makes it safe to handle. And I always get asked, well, how deep do I need to bury the wires? Do they need to be uh, to code? Do they need to be 12 inches, 24 inches? Um, and because it's low voltage, really they only got to be deep enough that you're not going to be digging them up. Um, if a dog bit into him and chewed on your wire, he's barely even going to feel anything. So um, there is really no regulations any in our area anyway as to how deep you have to bury those because that wire does get converted into very safe 12 volt uh, as it is in the ground. So how we select our transformer is based on on wattage. So for example, this is a 150 watt transformer uh, from FX Luminaire. And the way we've determined this one is pretty simple. We have approximately 30 lights on this property and each of those lights averages just over four watts. So 30 times four is 120. 
So we're only using 120 watts or only require 120 watts for this project. Um, but you always want to size your transformer approximately 20% higher uh, just to uh, just to cure any inefficiencies or anything like that and give a little bit of extra room also if you ever want to add on down the road. So 150 watt transformer will easily handle our, uh, our load of lights. And the other reason I like this one too is this actually has a 15 volt tap here. So if you watch a lot of old videos on YouTube about landscape lighting, they talk a lot about voltage drop. Uh, that's because most of those landscapers uh, and, and those designers are using halogen fixtures. If you're getting a quote for a system and somebody's still quoting you on a halogen fixture, I would run for the hills because they're really just trying to sell you a cheaper system. It doesn't make any sense nowadays uh, with LED. And the reason that we can run 30 lights on one transformer is because LED uses so much less power. You might save money on the fixtures by going the halogen route, but then you're gonna have to get a massive transformer to run that. And you gotta be really careful on how you run the wire and voltage drop and all those types of things. What I'm telling you is that if you choose a transformer like this that has a 15 volt tap, you can run 20 to 30 lights off of this transformer, upwards of 300 plus feet of wire out without ever having to worry about enough voltage drop because a good quality fixture is gonna run even if it only gets nine volts on it. A crappy quality fixture is not going to, but if you get a good one, they're all designed to run between nine and 10 volts, which means you can lose a lot of power along the way and that light is still gonna run properly. So another reason why you don't wanna skimp on a fixture because it is gonna cause you more problems down the road. Uh, and then to run this, there's a couple ways you can do that. The way I like is just by adding something called an astronomic timer that basically uses uh, uh, sunrise and sunset to program everything and turn your lights on and off. Or the other option is to make this go Wi-Fi by using our Weon Wi-Fi transformer. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.